G'day, this is the Inner Chief Podcast and the Winter Wisdom Series for 2019, a collection of the best of the best from our first 128 episodes of the Inner Chief Podcast. So far in our first Winter Wisdom Series episode, we covered the top five reading recommendations of all the chiefs that have been on the show, and last week we covered how to get unstuck. This week, we're going to talk all about mentors, why they're important, how to get one, who should be your mentor, and what to do once you have one. We've asked more than 50 CEOs about the importance of mentors in their career journey, and every single one of them sees it as a critical element. So let's find out more. I'm your host, Craig Layton, and I believe that if you want more clarity, confidence, and influence at work, and ultimately to get your dream job faster, then learning from the masters coupled with consistent personal growth is instrumental. Every Thursday, I'll bring you a deep diving interview with a CEO or guru that reveals their inner secrets to success. And every Monday, I post a short, sharp mini-sode with the best advice I can muster to help you achieve your career and life goals. This is about becoming your greatest self and revealing to the world your true inner chief. Now, chief, if you're yet to rate the episode and subscribe, I hope you'll do so soon. It helps others see the magnificent value that the chiefs and gurus on the show bring to their life and career. So make sure you hit subscribe on your podcast app now, give it a five-star rating if you think it's worthy, and leave a short review about your favorite episode. Now, Chief, are you working your tail off doing everything you can to be the best professional, but still finding perhaps you're not getting in front and you just don't know why? You're you're not sure if it's a relationship with your boss that's costing you, maybe your routines and your processes, maybe you don't have the right network or the right skills, maybe you don't have the right track record, whatever it is, sometimes it's hard to know what exactly might be costing you a promotion. So what I've done is created the Chief Maker Career Scorecard. It's a 25-question survey that gives you a free automated report about your precise situation. It'll tell you exactly what you need to do in order to get ahead and design a roadmap for your dream job and life. As I said, it's totally free. I've automated the whole process so anybody can go and do it. Just go to chiefmaker.com.au and at the top, click Career Scorecard. In this episode, our third in the Winter Wisdom series, as I said, it's all about mentors. Let's hear what our chiefs and gurus had to say, because in this episode, we're going to cover the following. Why having a mentor is so important, how to get a mentor and who to approach and what to do once you have one. And as a bit of a bonus, we're also going to cover some of the key lessons that our chiefs learned from their own mentors. So let's get on with the show. Number one, why is having a mentor so important? Imagine if we never turned for anyone for advice. I mean, I chat to my wife when I have big decisions to make or challenges to overcome. I have a beer and talk with my mates about life's journey. I seek advice from my parents, from old family friends. I consult healthcare professionals and fitness professionals and other experts when I need specific guidance and coaching. So why should work be any different? For career acceleration, we know we all must continue to grow and learn. You have to make decisions. Those decisions can be hard. You know, you have to make change and change can be hard. So all these milestones are better faced when you have guidance and advice. Zimmy Mecca, founder of Ozenko, sums it up perfectly in episode 66. Here's what Zimmy had to say. 100%. What, what's the old saying? Problem shared, problem solved. Having a mentor gives you that balanced view, an experienced perspective. Now remember, a mentor is someone who has been there and done that. They've gone before you. A coach is not necessarily a mentor. They're often someone who hasn't even been there and done that. They're an expert in a set number of things that you want to achieve. A mentor is a person that's there already been there, done that. Here's what Nikki Sparshot, the CEO of T2T, said in episode 11. You know, I think the importance of mentors is that 
you need to have a safe place where you can have those very unfiltered sounding board conversations where you can shoot the breeze, you can explore scenarios where you're not judged for it or equally where you are because you've got a relationship where someone can say, actually, Nikki, that's not going to work or you need to hold yourself to account to a higher order or the value of those mentorships have been really really important to me we're so much so now that i i play a mentorship role for many others because i think you've got to pay it forward and ronsley vaz the great podcaster and founder of amplify agency said this in episode 80 the entourage is is super important it is so important like the fact that that determines your perspective of the world and the kind of conversations that you're exposed to is 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 key having a mentor that helps see something that you've not seen saves you lots of time energy frustration money surrounding yourself with good people is 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 the is the start of that The value of having a mentor is clear. They help you talk through issues and concerns in a safe environment. They help you get unstuck. The communication gives you clarity. It helps you make decisions, decisions that you're more comfortable with and you can have confidence in executing. So point number two is how to get a mentor and who to approach. The biggest message here is just ask. If you don't ask, you don't get. Now, I've asked so many of these CEOs that I've interviewed to meet me at a later date to give me some guidance in my business and my coaching. And almost unanimously, they have very nicely said yes and met me. Right, so don't be afraid. Chances are the person you ask will be honored. They'll be privileged to spend some time with you. They've probably had an inspiring mentor in the past and they'd love to do the same for you. Never be afraid about that because the other thing that does happen is if they can't help you, they will likely mention someone else's name who could be just right for you, perhaps even better. But who? Who should you ask? This is a great question and there are quite a few answers. Some of our chiefs have multiple mentors and there's a good reason for this. You might look within your current business, a manager, a leader or a colleague, someone who you respect. You might look outside the business to someone within the same industry, perhaps an organisation you want to work for, once again, someone you respect and have heard about. Or you might look for someone in an entirely different industry. And the reason you might do that is because you want to learn, and that might be more about personal growth or career growth or expanding your horizons. Or perhaps you turn to an old trusted friend, an old family friend of some sort. There's a place for all these different types of people. Most importantly, as I said, choose someone who you respect and someone who will challenge you. In episode 121, Megan Macedo said this. I think that it's really important to lean on mentors because actually most of us probably know what we should do if we're being really honest with ourselves. It's just that it's really scary to do it. And I think it's important to lean on mentors to take take a sense of permission if that's what you feel like you need or just have a sanity check and bounce it off them. But it's really about kind of getting that confidence to do it. And I think that the reason, you know, Perry is still one of my big mentors. And the reason that I went to him and not some other people that I had followed is because I looked at not just his business and his business experience. I looked at his whole life and I thought that's a guy I could get along with. Like I would, that's, the kind of life that he has, that's the kind of life that I would like to live. He, you know, he has family, he has kids. He didn't seem to be a workaholic. He had interests outside of his business. Um, A lot of the other mentors that that were around at the time, people had followed before were very successful in their work, but they were pretty much workaholics and their personal life didn't look the way that I would like my personal life to look. So I kind of was looking around for someone where it's like, I can trust his advice because I know that the results that it bears out in your life as well as your business are something that that I can live with. So I think that's really important to find someone who isn't just great in one area, but you look at their you look at them as a as a whole human being and you think that's the kind of person I would like to be around. And then in episode 124, Mike Schneider, MD of Bunnings, said this. You've got to be accountable. And I think the other thing is that in life, you need to have the right support framework around you. So 
you know, I've got a range of different people that I would call coaches and mentors. And, I, and I've been fortunate in my career to work for a number of leaders from my first store manager in Target to uh, my predecessor here at Bunnings, who you look up to and admire um, and respect. The good part is they're all human, just like me. So there's good bits and bad bits. And, and leadership and learning from other leaders is a bit like a smorgasbord. You actually learn what you want to be out of the leader you're working for as well as you don't want to be. And I think being independent is important because no one wants you to be version 2.0 of, of the person who came before you, including the person who came before you. They want to see you grow and, and be mm. successful. So I'm enormously grateful. My opportunity is to pay the gifts that they've given me forward and give other people career opportunities. But you need other support framework in your life. So, you know, I have a coach that helps me with some running. I have a, a coach that does a bit of work you know, in the gym. Um, I have, you know, a good GP that I go and check up with every six months. I have a, a psychologist that I go and chat to every now and then, not because of anything other than I want to make sure that uh, the mind and the body are working really well. And I think that in today's world, talking about issues around, you know, mental health and mental wellbeing are actually still a little bit nervy, particularly for people in senior roles. Um, but I think the reality is we all have good days and bad days and we all have doubts and self-doubts mm. and, and having the right support framework around you to be your best, whether it's running 20Ks a little bit quicker than the last time you did it or um, losing two or three kilos or getting your blood pressure checked or actually having someone talk about how things are feeling in your, in your mind and soul is really important. And I think that creates a good sense of balance and calm as well. Chief, now we come to point number three. What do you do once you have a mentor? You know what? This is a really important relationship. And if you don't turn up fully prepared, ready with questions to ask, you've got to show them that you are keen to learn, that you really want to ask them hard questions, be challenged, be prepared to take hard advice. Okay, so once you've got that chief in mind or that mentor in mind who's going to help you, here are a couple of very quick guidelines. Always turn up on time. Always go to them as much as you can. Go so they don't have to do any sort of travel. You manage the agenda. You manage what's going on. If they give you some advice, make sure you go away in that period in between meetings and you do something about it. A good rhythm for a mentor is really once a quarter, uh, once every half year. I think if you're going every single month, it ends up being more of a coaching type relationship. That's up to you. You've got to use, you know, depending on the kind of relationship you've got. If they're a very busy person, you're looking at once a quarter, once or half a year. If they're more like an old family friend or someone who you know within the business, it might be more regular, particularly if it's a formal mentoring program. The key thing here is the most important thing is turn up, be ready, listen to their advice, apply it, come back, tell them what you did, tell them what you're really trying to do, be transparent with the challenges you're facing. And if you do that, they will take you under their wing and show you things you probably never believed possible. So Chief, according to all the CEOs that have been on the show, that is why you need to have a mentor, how to get one and what to do when you get one. But what I wanted to share with you was some of the absolute gold that our chiefs have had or the advice that has been given to them from their mentors. Here's what Mitch Matthews, the founder of Dream Think Do, said in episode 50. This is about his profound learning thanks to his mentor. Years ago, when I knew that I needed to develop my network I knew that I needed to, to meet new people, build relationships, all of those things. A very sage, wise mentor of mine saw that I was kind of torn up, that I was worried that I wasn't really going to be able to connect with people, build a powerful network, lead people, all of those things. And he, he isolated something, he like poked me and said, you're focusing on the wrong things. And I said, OK, well, what's that? Right. He knew I was stirred up, like to walk into a room of strangers or to try to lead a team of people and not necessarily want to be, you know, in the spotlight as I do. He's like, you're focused on being interesting. Don't be interesting. Be interested. Mm. And it's probably one of the most profound pieces of advice that I've have ever had that is applied to just about everything in my life. You know, just connecting with someone. Don't focus on being interesting be interested, ask a question, be curious. You know, as a leader, I think one of the most important things is don't don't focus on being interesting. You know, don't worry about that spotlight. Put that spotlight on someone else. And whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, you can learn from that wisdom and be interested, be curious. 
people will pick up on that. And if that is authentic and real, it will be one of the greatest gifts that you can give them. And it will inspire loyalty, creativity, innovation, and, uh, you know, again, that engagement, uh, that we need. So uh, it's one that I, I remind myself of every day, whether I'm walking into a room of strangers, you know, for a keynote or whether I'm leading a team, it's that whole thing of, uh, what am I focusing on today? Am I focusing on trying to be interesting or am I focused on being interested? And if I'm focused on being interested, it, it pays out every time. In episode 107, Rob Patterson, MD of Parkins Lane, said this about his early mentors. Yeah, I've been very lucky. I've been very lucky. I, probably the, the first mentor, and he's now one of my major surfing buddies, Paul Devine at Deloitte. When I started at Deloitte, pretty soon was working for Paul, and he was a manager at Deloitte at the time. What I was so lucky about was that he took me to everything. Mm. He took me to all the meetings. He took me to the BD functions with the bankers, warts and all. And he probably threw me a little bit in the deep end, but, but I just got such a, a good view of how the business was run and what it was and and how to go about about it you know not everyone's that lucky sometimes i'll work for someone who micromanages and paul was the anti micromanager you know Mm. he would give Mm. you a few really broad bullet points and come back to me when you've dealt with each (laughs) Uh, which was at times made it you know it was challenging but yeah he was it was just great to to have someone who was really happy and comfortable with me understanding Mm. their role yeah, you know, a lot of bosses struggle with that because you know they're worried about you know maybe you're taking their role. Mm. Paul was yeah very generous, so he was a brilliant mentor. And then as I mentioned earlier, Juan Martinez was tremendous as well. You know, working closely with Juan, I learned a lot about a lot of things that are tough in in management. I think that's what he does particularly well is that he's prepared to make hard calls. He's prepared to not be the nice guy all the time. So I learned that that was an important part of leadership. You know, it's never gratuitous, it's never vindictive, but it's just honest. Mm. You know, I, you know, even even down to when you have to let someone go, his position was that you're doing them a disfavour every minute that you leave them in your organisation because they could be being hugely successful somewhere else. And in episode 113, George Hunt, CIO of the year, spoke really highly of his mentors including our very first episode, CEO Kevin Young from Sydney Water. Here's what George had to say about his mentors. I think there were three that come to mind. Mm. The first one I mentioned earlier, which was Mm. the managing director of the Petrofina business Mm. I worked for, John Wolf. He taught me very, very quickly the power of winning hearts and minds Mm. and talking to people, the power of people, as opposed to being... I, I guess what I would describe is the difference between a leader creating followers and a manager telling people what to do. And, and I knew at that point, and this was a fair while ago, I knew at that point that I wanted to be the sort of person that could create followers or the sort of person that could follow a great leader. Mm, you know, yeah. and, and, and that being on that side of the leadership versus management kind of spectrum became really important to me very quickly. So I would say he was the first one. The second one was a project I did with GlaxoSmithKline. And I worked for a guy who was utterly ruthless. He was utterly ruthless in terms of wanting to achieve. But what he did do is he taught me very quickly about if you focus on an outcome, you try and work out how, what contribution everybody needs to make to that outcome, you can achieve amazing things. So he was a little bit different. Rather than convincing people to achieve something, he was basically, let's keep our eye on the outcome and let's keep true to that goal. And mm. let's all work together to achieve an outcome, which is a little bit more analogous to a sporting team saying it doesn't matter how you win a game, whether you win it with flair or you win it ugly, it's about winning. Yeah, sure. you know, and, and I follow yeah. rugby like you do, Greg, and you know, an ugly win is still a win. <laughs> you know, so, mm. so that she was another person who I really respected. The third one is a simple one for me, and um, you know, it's somebody I know you hold in massive reg- high regard as well, which is Kevin, mm. Kevin Young. He's a remarkable guy. Everybody who comes into contact with Kevin will just go the extra mile for him mm. without question. Chief, that sums up mentors. I just want to finish on two other aspects. If you were sitting there thinking, you know what? There's no one out there who I want to be my mentor. No one rings a bell. No one seems right for you. Then step one is to expand your network immediately. Go to a conference. Go Join a networking group. There are some absolutely brilliant ones out there. Here is what Jonathan Rubenstein had to say about 
his network, which is the YPO, or Young Presidents Organisation, and his involvement in that. So YPO is a not-for-profit organisation, and it's really around CEOs typically working on their personal their professional and their business side of their lives. I think there are lots of organisations. There's another one called EO, which is Entrepreneurs Organisation. There are uh, CEO institutes around the world and there are business management institutes. To me, and different people have different ways of learning about themselves, learning about the world and learning about the industry they're in and getting insight YPO has been a great uh, organization for me to actually have a bunch of people that, and the organization itself, that can help A, provide a forum to think through issues or opportunities that you have, and also uh, like-minded people who can, who are sharing similar issues and opportunities at the similar part of their career. I think that having a group, getting a partner, a mentor, a friend that you can trust, that has no agenda, if you want, uh, and sometimes your partner might have an agenda. It might be your personal partner or your business partner might have an agenda. But from my perspective, having that has been extremely valuable to me. And, Chief, my final point is this. We had a fantastic chief and guru on the show recently, a guy called Ram Castillo in episode 111. He is so passionate about the importance of business mentors. He wrote a whole book about it. It's specific to the creative industry, but the messages are universal. Certainly worth a read for anyone who wants to learn more, and I'll put a link in the show notes. So that's it, folks. Mentors. They are a critical piece of the career puzzle, a critical piece of elite performance. A must-have, and you don't have to limit yourself just to one. Have many in different parts of your life at different chapters in your life. I totally get it. It can be a daunting task. But remember this, don't ask, don't get. So I want to give you a little challenge. In the next week, find yourself someone new who can be a mentor for you and just ask them. Flat out, ask them if you can go for a coffee. And this is how you do it. Send them a message, either direct email or through LinkedIn or through whatever messaging platform you can find. And just say, hi, I'm looking for some career advice. I really respect you. If you can mention maybe that you've heard them speak or, or you know them through the business, and I would love, if it's okay with you, just to spend half an hour of your time picking your brain about how I can improve my performance. Um, and I will come to you, I'll buy the coffee, all that kind of stuff, and just see if they say yes. You know, if they say no, say thank you so much for your time, no problems, try someone else, okay? Okay, Chief, that sums it up. What I want you to do now is get out there and try and find someone out there who can be a great mentor for you. Uh, As always, I put all the show notes on the website. Just go to chiefmaker.com.au and all the show notes are there. As always, remember to stay epic.